I'm definitely going to pre-order that. Oh my god, I shouldn't. I'm on a book buying ban! <laughs> Hello, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we're in a bit of a new location. You would have seen this in my reading my first buddy read vlog already, but this is the first kind of like, I was gonna say sit down, but I'm standing up. The first like, just talking to the camera video that I'm filming here. This is my new flat at uni. So today we're gonna be talking about my most anticipated releases that are coming out. <laughs> Both at the end of this year. Don't look at me! <laughs> Both at the end of this year and then one comes out early next year. Um, most of them are series finishers that I'm excited about because I have a special sense of satisfaction when I read a book in a series. It's like, I don't know, it's just good when you feel like oh, I'm further in that series or I've finished that series. It's just like a weight off your chest. <laughs> Please let me know down below if you are excited about any of these releases coming soon and Let's just talk about them. So the first one is The Toll by Neil Shusterman. This is the final book in the Scythe series. Um, it's a really good series actually. I enjoyed the second book a lot more than the first book. The first book was like a three star for me, but then I gave Thunderhead, the second book in the series, five stars. So I'm very excited for this book and to see where it leads on from Thunderhead. So in Scythe, we enter a world where death has been eradicated by human science and uh, how much we're able to do now. But in order to control the population, people still need to die. And so it's basically the Scythe's job to glean people, essentially kill them. And different Scythes are different methods, different ways of choosing who they're going to glean. And we follow Sitra and Rowan as they train to become Scythe's apprentices and then eventually to become Scythe's. There's a little bit of romance in the story, but it's like not too overpowering. That if you're like me, I don't like in fantasy books when all the cool elements of the fantasy book get overtaken by a romance. Like that's how I felt like Wicked Fox went. Like it had so much potential, so much interesting magical elements. And then the whole book was the romance. So this isn't like that. It's just like a little sprinkling. The cliffhanger that Thunderhead ended on. Whew. Girl, this is all this is all gonna be no spoilery. So obviously, if it's something like Thunderhead, where we've had the second book in the series, I'm not gonna spoil it. But the ending. Also, one of the new characters we met in the last book was Grayson Tolliver, and I don't want to spoil what happens in that, but he plays quite a big part in that book. And the name is the Toll, Grayson Tolliver, the Toll. So it indicates I think he's gonna play a big, big part in this book. Also, I think he's the one in the center of the cover. So while Seacher and Rowan had kind of been like our lead character, <laughs> been our lead characters um, in the first two books, I think he's gonna have a much, much bigger role and kind of move the story like onwards. I really hope it continues with like the political element, the political intrigueness um, of the last book because that's why I enjoyed Thunderhead so much. The first one, like I didn't feel like it went into the whole political workings of that society as much as I wish it had. And then in Thunderhead it did and I was like, here we go. I love like political dealings in fantasy books. Like I've talked about how in the Baron Nice and Go you had that as well. And I just love it. I just love how political systems work in fantasy books. I love it so much. If anyone knows, that's a very niche, <laughs> that's a very niche thing I enjoy. If anyone knows any other books that have very good political conflicts and dealings and secrecy in fantasy books, let, let a gal know. The next one is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha and Yang. This is the second book in this series. I think it's gonna be a three book series as well. In Girls of Paper and Fire, we follow Lei, who is of the paper case system, which is the lowest of three tiers. And every year, a selection of paper girls get chosen to go and be the Demon King's concubines. There's heavy trigger warnings for rape in this series, but I personally think it deals with it really really well and um, I spoke about this in my uh, five favorite books of the year series because series <laughs> my five favorite books of the year video uh, which I'll link up above we had the selection of girls who were all his concubines and in each one of them Natasha managed to I guess show a different response you know different responses that people have to that kind of trauma people deal with it in different ways 
and she managed to kind of each of the girls reacted in a different way which I thought was really really well done and gave a lot of you know representation and depth I guess depth to the story it really captured my heart because yeah I just felt like you really felt for these girls so much in such a difficult position but they were also so strong and I remember I read it um I went and I bought loads of books as I probably said before when I was in Florida and Barnes and Noble I was like <laughs> like carrying around all these books <laughs> There were so many I'd been excited to read. I was like, I'm gonna read that next. But the first one I put, picked up was Girls, Paper and Fire because something just drew me to it. And on holiday, I was just like transfixed by it. I, I really, really loved it. In this book, I'm really looking forward to Lay building her cause against Demon King and the corruption of those in power. Uh, I really hope she's gonna try and fight that and we're gonna see some. I mean, it's the middle book and usually in middle books, you expect a bit of a lull. Obviously, when I was talking about the Thunderhead, that wasn't a lull, that was like a... But usually with these kind of series, is the middle book is a little bit chiller, a little bit more time with the characters, and I enjoy that. But looking forward to Lei becoming more of a leader, I guess. I'm guessing that's going to happen. I'm also looking forward to more gay shit, boys. If you want some female female romance, this is a place to be. <laughs> I also really hope that she manages to keep the atmosphere that we had in the first book. It had such a great atmosphere. And I think that's so difficult when a book so drastically switches locations. Obviously I'm not gonna spoil anything, but there is gonna be a drastic switch of locations, I think, from a majority of the book. And I think that's so, so difficult for an author because it's almost like you're writing an entirely different book. A lot of the atmosphere you've set up in quite an enclosed space we were in for the first book is suddenly like, torn apart very drastically. I spoke about how in um, the Brandon Nightingale series, the kind of world slowly expanded, and this might do that, but I feel like it's gonna be like <laughs> But I'm super, super excited to read this. It's top of my Christmas wish list. It's up there. I'm like, everyone, please just get me it. So next is Supernova by Marissa Mayer, which is the last in the Renegade series. So in Renegades, we follow <laughs> Anyone's names. Oh my god, Nova. <laughs> In many cases, we follow Nova, who has been raised um, as part of the anarchists, who are the villains in the story. Um, her uncle was the head anarchist who was killed many, many, many years ago by the head renegades. She decides, and her group decide, for her to go undercover so she can learn more about their workings in order for her group to take them down. However, of course, she's gonna gain feelings and friendships and be confused and have different loyalties and blah, 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 blah. so that's essentially the, the book. <laughs> um, I've had very mixed feelings about this series. The first book I remember reading and I was like Pff. I gave it three stars which isn't terrible but I loved the Lunar Chronicles by her and I felt like it was like a major step down for her in my opinion. But in the case of the second book I felt like it picked up a bit. There were still issues with pacing and feeling like not much happened, but I gave it four stars because I read it in like a day, so oh, the sun has gone. I read it in like a day, so I felt like I had to give it four stars. I really enjoyed it, I flew through it. So it was a step up. I'm hoping the last one is another step up, although part of me thinks it's probably gonna be a four star maximum. I don't know, I'm excited to read Heartless by Marissa Mayer as well, which I have with me. <laughs> give me a sec which we have here, because it's kind of like a retelling, like Lunar Chronicles, which I feel like is what she's best at. I don't know, I'm excited to read this. I'm nervous to read Supernova, but then the series is done. So I'm like, wait off my chest. <laughs> I really hope that a lot happens in this book. I want it to be action packed, because I feel like that was the one thing we we're missing in the last two books. Like it's a superhero series, so you want it to be like, bam, 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 bam. And then it's not, everyone's just like, like sitting around talking. I just want a lot of things to go wrong. I want a lot of things to go right. I want there to be turmoil, but I want there to be like a hundred action scenes, essentially. That's what I'm hoping we're gonna get. The next book that is on my most anticipated list to come out is The Starless Sea by Erin Morganston. I haven't read The Night Circus yet, but I really want to, but this book, it sounds like right up my alley. I haven't heard anyone talk about like, I've heard people mention it, but I haven't heard anyone read it yet. There are arcs out already. I haven't heard what anyone thinks. <laughs> part of me, there is part of me, I was on Waterstones looking at the upcoming releases and I saw the cover, the Waterstones cover, and I was like, <laughs> I'm filming this like a couple of days before my student loan comes in and when that comes in, 
I might be pre-ordering this. <laughs> so the lead character finds a mysterious book in a library that when he reads it, part of it tells a story of something that happened in his life. There are a series of clues, a bee, a key and a sword. He is led to a library hidden under the surface of the earth. I don't even know how to explain the last part of the synopsis simply. Like, I don't know how to simplify this to you, so I'm just going to read it out from the Warstones website. What Zachary finds in this curious place is more than just a buried home for books and their guardians. It is a place of lost cities and seas, lovers who pass notes under doors and across time, and of stories whispered by the dead. Zachary learns of those who have sacrificed much to protect this realm, relinquishing their sight and their tongues to preserve this archive, and also those who are intent on their, on its on its destruction. <laughs> Together with Mirabelle, a fierce pink head protector of the place, and Dorian, a handsome barefoot man with shifting alliances, Zachary travels the twisting tunnels, darkened stairwells, crowded ballrooms, and sweetly soaked shores of this magical world, discovering his purpose in both the mysterious book and his own life. Whew. You can't tell me that doesn't excite you. You can't tell me that doesn't make you go, that last bit with the S's really tested me. I had like a, um, I had to go to voice training when I was a kid because I said my S's like, like, so I can't even do it now. But um, that S's test me, too many S's. So I was like, like a bead of sweat. No. <laughs> I really love whimsical writing, which is what I've heard her writing is like. I love the vagueness, but also like the explosion of imagery you get when you read that synopsis. Oh my God. I just wanna read it so bad. I just wanna read it so bad. So. I'm very excited for that to come out. And that's obviously the only one of these which is not part of a series which I've been reading. So, yes. I'm definitely going to pre-order that. Oh my god, I shouldn't. I'm on a book buying ban! <laughs> and the last book that I'm very, very excited to be released is The King of Crows by Libba Bray, which is part of the Diviner series. Now, if you haven't seen my Buddy Read video, my first ever Buddy Read video, go check that out. It's a mess. I'm a mess. I'm actually filming it now, currently as well. I am reading The Diviners and I'm planning to finish it today. I've got that left. So I'll be filming, hopefully, everything on the same day. We shall see. Knowing me, probably not. I'm obviously only just reading the first in the series now. I've got Lair of Dreams with me here. Woohoo! But I'm so excited for this to come out at the start of next year. I love finishing series, so I think I'm going to get through this series quite quickly. I'm just, I'm so excited for all the books to be out so I can just have them all at my disposal. It's set in 1920s New York and we meet a collection of people who, many of whom have special powers and they're all trying to stop a dark and evil force from terrorising New York who is committing murders and it's very mysterious, very spooky, ooky dooky mooky. It's got Scooby Doo gang vibes, sis. We love that. It is a really great story. I'm still not sure I'm going to rate this yet. Um, you'll know if you've seen that video. But, um, yeah, I just... The fact that there's three more books in this series. God, I'm so excited. So, yeah, very excited for King of Crows to come out soon. So, there we have it. That is all my most anticipated upcoming releases. As I said, do let me know if you're excited for the news too or what your most um, anticipated reads that are coming out are. I'd love to hear so I can get more excited about more books that are coming out, even though I should just read the ones I've got. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell, comment, give me all that interaction because I'm lonely. Thank you so much for watching to this point and I'll see you soon with another video and I hope you're well until then. Bye.